Okay, so Buju in Dunawe Maganadog, Owanakwe Ojibwe Mong, Ivanin in Dejnakaj, Shagi Nashi Mong, Gichio Nigamin in Dunjaba, Mayingan Nendu Dame, and Eko in Dunanel Key. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Ivy Vineo, and I uh, work as the cultural art coordinator at the American Indian Community Housing Organization in Duluth. And um, my uh, family is uh, enrolled with uh, Grand Portage. I'm a direct descendant. Um, and so, yeah, and so welcome to tonight's uh, class, paint class with uh, Karen Savage Blue. We're so excited to, to do this. This is hopefully a first of many art, um, visual art classes that we have um, via Zoom um, with, a, so, with various artists. Um, and so um, miigwech to Karen for, for joining us tonight. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce her and then I'm gonna kind of go over the rules of engagement here. Um, Karen Savage Blue is an enrolled member of the Fond du Lac Band of Ojibwe. Uh, she attended the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe and received a bachelor's degree in art education K-12 from the University of Minnesota Duluth and master's degree in education from Santa Fe University of Art and Design. She is currently an art faculty member at the Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College. Uh, her work has been featured in many state, regional, and national exhibitions, as well as in local national publications. Karen's paintings explore themes of internal reflection, identifying with nature, and exposing transitions from human to natural forms. She also depicts nature in its raw form, creating a platform where thoughts and emotions overcome the tendency to decipher meaning. It is art to be seen, felt, and listened to. And um, I have known Karen for many, many years, probably 30 years. Uh, we both went to UMD back in the early 90s. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. <laughs> and so um, we were so young back then. Um, and um, I, I love Karen's paintings. I have um, many. I'm going to show you one of them that I, this is an original. It's birch bark trees. Mm -hmm. I love it so much. Um, and so uh, tonight she's going, going to teach uh, a paint class and the theme is uh, Minnesota landscape. Um, mm -hmm. Very well known for. And um, so just before I turn it over to Karen, I, I need to thank the funders, which are the Minnesota Department of Human Services, um, Behavioral Health Division through our traditional healing grant and uh, the McKnight Foundation. And so um, rules of engagement is that um, if you have a question, please use the chat and I will moderate those questions. And then at the end, we can open it up and you can ask your own questions. Um, but feel free to use the chat at any time. And um, when, it, when it feels right, I will ask the question. Um, so if, if you need her to back up and, you know, repeat something for you or whatever, just put that in the chat and we'll get to it. So, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna turn it over to Karen. Miigwech, Karen. Thank you, Ivy. Appreciate that introduction. Hello, everyone. Like, you know, my name is Miss Savage. Go ahead, call me Miss Savage or Karen. Um, today we're going to work on a landscape, Minnesota landscape. Thing about Minnesota is we have so many seasons within a year that I think we get to see just about everything. We have everything covered here. So I'm going to assume everyone has the five colors, the red, the yellow, the green, the blue, and the white. And I don't know if your set came with the black. Um, we probably won't use the black. Um, we'll just use our dark blue for our dark color and the green. Okay, 
Um, and what I want to do is sometimes I'll work from photos and we'll work, we'll, we'll work from some photos or I'm just going to show you what we're going to do. And then, um, I'll, I'll guide you through it. Okay. Let me switch up my camera here. Um, I'm going to assume folks have a eight by 10 canvas, maybe smaller. All right. This is uh, my canvas is painted gray because I wanted you all to be able to see what I'm doing. Easy, and it's a bit easier than with, with a white. Okay. Now I know this is really what I want us to do. Is I want to start. I want us to start with this sky. And you'll notice that the sky is darker towards the top and as it gets down, this is, this is really, it's hard for us to see this, but let me see if I can. As we move down towards the bottom, let's turn our canvases the same way up and down um, vertical. So we're gonna work, work this way and we're gonna start what I'd like you to do is when we do our sky, I'm going to guide you along. What I'd like you to do is when you look at this canvas, I want you to visually, you know, cut it in half down the middle. I'll cut it in half going across, you know, visually doing that. Um, cut it in thirds. Uh, so when I say to you on the top third of the, of, the, of the canvas, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking if you were to visually just divide this up into three spaces. And of course, um, I'll say something like um, near the center line in the upper third, or that's how I'm gonna refer to the space on here. Plus you'll also be um, seeing me doing this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, start with this guy. And I'm gonna show you my palette. Here's my palette. And what I'd like you folks to do is mix up some let's, let's mix up our blues all right now this is my blue i'm going to put a little white in there so you could see it better now this is ultramarine not one of my favorite colors so what i like to do to ultramarine is add some just a smidgen uh, and that's this is how much a smidgen is by the way of the Put a smidgen of green in there. That that is, that should help calm this color down a little, or give it a little more character. I'll put it that way. So what I want to do now? Here's what we want. We want a medium dark, and that we're going to put at the top. We're going to use our put our medium dark at the top. So let's mix enough of it. <laughs> I'm going to add, I'm going to put a little more. I think I need a little more and we're going to use up. We're going to try to use all your paint tonight. So I'm going to mix up my awesome green with my blue, some white to it. I got, oh, I got a mess. I just want to see my color. Okay. I need more blue. Mm, I, I, I'm not sure what, what you folks, how, how avid of painters you all are, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I got a, a large range of experience. So the type of paint I like to use is, uh, this is, this is one you look at, it says water soluble. Maybe you can see that, let's see. But it's, it says, well, actually it says water mixable paint. I, I never mix water with this paint, but uh, you could, but I don't. But I like it because you don't have to use any um, oil, oil cleaners like mm, linseed oil, you don't have to use that or, um, Turpentine, you don't have to use that to clean your brushes with. You can just use Dawn dishwashing to turn it. I really like this blue I got right here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape it up, okay, and I'm going to put, I'm going to divide this into fours, the upper fourth. I'm going to put it smeared onto my canvas here. Let me put this up, okay, just going to smear this across. Now when you're doing this, make sure that you cover all of your canvas or wood panel. That's what I'm working on. I'm working on a wood panel, looks like this. See, it's wood framed. But I'm just gonna put some paint up here for now. And then we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some fun with this too. I kind of, I want it kind of dark up here. So go ahead and just back and forth. Or you can go just one direction. I want us to kind of smooth this out a little. All right. All right, let's come down a little bit. This is the one fourth. I'll say that's the one fourth mark. I'm gonna come down to, I'm just gonna mark it so you know where I'm at. I'm gonna come down to about here. That's my halfway mark. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna come down one third. I'm gonna take it, we're gonna go slow. Here's my one third mark, right? About. I'm gonna come down here, but what I'd like you folks to do is pick up some white. I didn't even clean this palette knife and you don't need to clean it just yet but i'm just going to pick up some white and let's just first let's just do this let's just kind of put it underneath i like how it's smearing i like how the blues in there mixing and it's the blue that's on my palette knife that's doing the mixing. But I want, I want what I want you to do is I want you to see what the paint can do all by itself without me or you really pushing it and trying to make it do something. Because I had paint on my palette knife, the blue paint, because I didn't clean it, it's just doing its own thing, which is kind of cool. And sometimes I think uh, I need to kind of respect the paint and, and let it do what it's gonna do. We don't always have to have control. I picked up some more white. I'm gonna finish this other side. Just applying it kind of thick. But like I said, I'm not cleaning this palette knife, so I have some nice glue mixing in with it. All right, I'm going to, I need more white. You'll probably be adding lots of paint onto your palette also. So now, let's see, I want you to see this. All right, okay. Right here, I need to put some more paint on. So I'm gonna fill this in. I still really haven't touched that blue yet. Right now I'm just going underneath it. Not really touching it. There's kind of a thin line between these two, but now I'm gonna start touching that line. I'm gonna to touch the area where, I'm picking up more white, I'm gonna to touch the area where the sky, the blue and the white meet. So I got that covered. All right. So now they're touching, they're at least touching. So now what I'm gonna do is, I have a lot of paint on my palette knife right now. I'll wipe it off and get yourself a paper towel. 
you should have paper towels. I probably should have told you all that. Because we're going to need to clean this off sometimes. So I'm just going to clean this palette knife off. Now I'll wait for you folks to get your palette knife cleaned. And then what we're going to do is, let me just try something. We're going to take this palette knife. I'm going to set it, set it down right here. One half my palette knife on the white, the other half on the blue, and I'm just going to run across, see how it blends. I'm going to do that right now, half and half. Press down and just move it along. Light pressure. And go back again. You might see some cool things happening. Just going to move it along. And I'm going to come down. I got a little bit of blue on the tip. Tip of my palette now. Karen, can I'm you just... move the painting over more? And No, like, yeah. Okay. But then, thank you. Like I said, I have a little bit of blue on the tip. On my palette knife. So I'm just going to come bring it down into that white a little bit. And same thing. I really like how this is. If, if you find that your paint is doing some awesome things and you didn't even try very hard let it be just let it be because you won't be able to relate to replicate those awesome things i'm just going down on the bottom i like this right let me see right in here i like that Okay, um, I think that um, up here, I think it's too dark. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is just gonna put some white on, white on my palette knife. And I'm going to make like a zigzag. I'll put it this way, hold it this way. And let's just start right about here. We're gonna do, we, we can go slow. We're going to do like a, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to show you the motion I'm going to do. I start here. I'm going to go zig about here, then zag into that white. I don't really know what's going to happen, but I guess we're going to find out. I hope we got enough paint on here. I'm not going to press down too hard. So I'm just going to nice and I'm going to touch this, but I'm not going to apply a lot of pressure. The thing about working with palette knives is pressure is a component zig come on the zig just pushing it now and it's not easy it's kind of skipping and i like that there hmm i like some of the things hmm. Um, I think this area right here needs some more white. I really like this. I like this kind of like that. But what I really want you folks to be experiencing right now is some randomness with your paint and your palette knife. The thing about the randomness, things that just happen based on the amount of paint you have on your canvas, based on the amount of paint that you have on your palette knife, and based on the amount of pressure you're putting, you'll get something that would be difficult to replicate because I don't think you could do that all three of those things exactly the same at once. 
So that's what I mean when I when I say the randomness. And to me that's to me that's cool stuff. All right. So I decided I want more paint over here. And right now my palette nice full of blue. I don't want it full of blue. I want a little more white because I'm trying to get it kind of white up there. Make some cool clouds. So I'll clean this thing off. Hmm. So I got some paint. I have paint on my palette knife and I, and I know it's too much. I know this is way too much paint. It's really thick. But, and, I, and actually I want you folks to start to notice the amount of paint that you're putting on your palette knife because it's going to be important at various times for various effects. So right now I got way too much paint on here. I'm going to I'm just, I'm going to flatten out some of these peaks on this palette knife. Just a little. I just don't want that much. A little better. So what I want to do is I'm just going to take this palette. Oops. <laughs> ah, there's some real randomness. I'm just going to take this. Just going to set it down. Just going to let it sit like a spaceship hovering in the sky. Just going to let it sit there. And I'm going to pull it that way. I like that. I'm going to do another one. I'm not going to change anything. I'm doing nothing with the paint. I just want one. I'm going to do the same thing a little bit more. I'm just going to let the spaceship hover in the sky. Let it sit there. Pull it. Oh, no, that looks like I got spaceships. Okay. Mm, did I wonder if they look too spaceshipy? Hmm. 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 I'm thinking about this. Maybe I'll do this. I'm clean this off because I'm working with the white. What I'm going to do is on the tail of this one here, I got nothing on my palette knife. It's nice and clean. I know there's paint right here. So with a clean palette knife, I'm just going to press into that white and I'm just going to pull it. Not so fast this time. I know there's paint down here. I'm going to use it down here. No, I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to go this way. I kind of like this cloud coming up. Come on. There. All right. So, so far, so good. I'm just gonna put a little bit over here. I'm gonna put one thing of white over here. Same procedure, clean palette knife. All right, I got some paint on here. Can you see the paint? I think I'll come in, if you can see this here, I'm gonna come in about here, I'm just gonna I think I'm going to just lightly touch it, not too much. Touch and come down. There, I like that. This is an accident, actually. This right here was an accident. Too much pressure, but I like it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to play with this sky some more. I got some blue on here. I'm just going to bring it down into here. I'm just going to mess with this part a little because I don't like it. I'm going to go across it one more time. Just going to take this palette knife and go across, see if I like what happens. This way, that way. Now I have a mixture of color. I'm going to put it into this blue, my medium blue. I'm just going to lift and drag, lift and drag, lift and drag. All right. Now we're going to do the opposite. In this white area here, I want to get some darker blue. So let's clean this thing off. And then I want to look at your skies. I'm going to get some of my darker blue. And we're almost done with this blue. So the last thing we're going to do with this blue. 
Got some dark blue on my palette knife. Doesn't look very dark, but it is. And I'm just going to close close where this dark blue is. I'm going to put a little bit more close to where this dark blue is on the canvas. That's where I'm going to start with some of this. Just going to set it down and pull it. Set it down and pull it. Put a little more on here. Then we're going to take a tiny little break. I want more blue here. Okay. I want this. I'm going to do a little more smearing. I don't care much for these blobs, but if you think your sky looks awesome, you should just leave it. Leave it alone. Try not to wreck things. If you wreck it, you'll know. You'll start to feel bad that you wrecked it. And you'll never be able to fix it again, but you'll be learning as an artist. It takes a lot of experience. Yeah, you gotta believe to in know yourself. when to quit. That's good. It's coming along. It's coming along. All right. Okay, folks. I want to try to see. I don't know if I can see everyone. Okay, now I'm full screen. If you'd like, perhaps you folks can just show me what you got. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. We got some cool stuff. Damn. Good, good. Looking good, folks. I hope you're happy. All right. We got some storms rolling in. <laughs> okay. You know, I was thinking that. Uh, we got all these colors, right? So we may as well use them. So what we're gonna do next is, uh, if you if you if your paper towel looks like mine, there's blue on it. Let's get a clean one because we're gonna go we're gonna go from we're gonna we're not gonna do the blue for a little while. We're gonna do the white and the yellow and a little bit of red. And if we get blue mixed in with that, even accidentally, it's gonna be green. And we don't want green right now, not yet. So let's, my palette looks like this. Oh, let me turn on my other camera. All right, my palette is kind of messy. This is a mess. This is, my yellow looks pretty good. I'm gonna try hard not to get in green or blue mixed into my yellow. That's one of my goals. And the only way that really could happen is if there's some accidentally on my palette knife or if I pick it up, if I pick it up on my, my canvas. So what I'm gonna do is, what we're gonna do next is, to prevent any of that blue getting in, we're gonna to try to prevent it from getting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some pure white and we're gonna come underneath here with some pure white, uh, make it go across and let's not, again, let's not, let's try not to touch this blue or white. We're gonna make it, we're just gonna have a, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I just like, you can see, the reason I painted my um, canvas gray was so you folks could see. So what I'm doing is, I'm just, I'm not going to get, I'm trying to avoid touching my sky. You can kind of see there's a gray line in between the white paint and the sky. That is just to keep this white nice and white. So let's do that. We can take a little time to do this. Try our darndest not to get blue in there, which surprisingly is difficult. 
but you know that's that that's the characteristic of oil paint and and you got to respect that it's it's blending properties are are the best so but then again sometimes it can work to your the painter's disadvantage so i got a nice line here all right nice line of white right there and i have my little i'm kind of scared of this area right here but let's just go ahead and uh connect these two we're going to connect this bottom part to this part here and like i said sometimes cool things will happen and if it does be happy all right i'm just gonna I've got some paint on this palette knife so i'm just going to connect these two by going over this line just pressing I'm not putting any new paint on and let, let's not go down. Let's just do this line and be done with it. And um, like I said, I'm not putting any new paint on. I'm just using what's already on there. What's already on this canvas. And when we're done with this part, I'm just connecting them, kind of like sewing them together. That works. I kind of like that effect, actually. All right. Okay. I'm going to clean this off because we're going to add yellow. Let me fix my, fix my falling camera here. All right, we're gonna add some, right, I gotta get rid of this blue right here. I don't want it there. That was my halfway mark. I gotta get that off of there. It's gonna cause me trouble with this yellow. Okay, let's take some yellow. Um, I'll make some food for you. I don't want any food, and thank you. Wow. I'll make food for you, and you're going to waste it? All right. I got my yellow, and I'm just going to start right about here put it on that's all i'm not i'm not too concerned about blending this in although it is blending yeah, it looks awesome it's gonna do a little bit at a time pick up a little yellow put it on be on our merry way i don't want it too yellow i mean i don't want it like dark yellow or dandelion yellow personally but then again if you're into like really awesomely bright colors hey that's cool but i said i wasn't gonna blend it but i am all right gonna finish this up let me just get my camera I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something to my camera right now to make it stay in place there we go I know how to do it. Okay. <clears throat> finish this up. Let's finish this up. All right. There's my yellow. I'm just going to blend it in just on the bottom for now till I decide just how light I want it. Go back and forth. Bring it up a little, however you want. However, you if you just want to touch night and nice and light and skip across there, that's cool. I 
this one skipped across. I kind of like that. I kind of like this textured textured sky, actually. The nice thing about doing skies is you don't want to fix things too often. All right, I'm going to pick up pick up some red. Well, not a lot. Red, extremely powerful color. Be careful. Careful with this red. I don't want a lot of red. I just want like a orangey salmon thing. So I'm just taking some of this yellow and mixing it in with this red and getting the awesome orange. But you decide what kind of color you want. Maybe you want your super red. That's cool too. I just got a salmon orange. I'm just going to put it on the bottom. I don't care too much about this color. There. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I like it. I kind of do. I think I'm going to make mine a little darker red. So I just put some pure red on there. I'm just going to put it on there and see what happens. I don't know, man. That's pretty red. But I'm just going to do it anyway. But like I said, red's a really powerful color. So be careful with your reds. All right, I got some red on here. I'm just going to play with it a little. Smooth it out a little. If you see something that looks really awesome, and you think, hey, I kind of like that. I know I keep repeating myself just to leave it alone, but hey, it's good sound advice. For example, see this right here? I like that. So I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm going to try to make something like that over here. But I don't know if, it, if I can do it. I'm just going to press it down. Press it and pull it. Yeah, it kind of works. Press it and pull it. Mm, not really. All right. Oh, I was going to try to, whatever, I'll try to fix that. I kind of like it. looks like it's on fire. All right. Hmm. Let's do this. Let's just take some of this red, this pure red, and bring it down. And we're going to bring, we're, let's have about an inch, inch and a half of red. All right, I got my red on here. I'm just going to smear it around because it's just pure red. I didn't mix any colors with this red, so I'm just going to get it on there. Good. That's what I'm doing is getting it on my canvas, kind of thick and even and I need more paint on my palette.
I love it, Karen. It's so beautiful. It's coming along. It is. All right. So let's get some dark blue. Well, the only blue we have, which is probably your ultra marine. You know, this really isn't one of my favorite colors, but it's okay for mixing. Can I put some of that on? And we're going to have some fun. All right, this is full of red. I'm going to clean it off. Let's do this. Let's take some of this blue. I got a big gob of blue. I'm going to put it into this right over the red is what I want to do. I want to actually take this blue, put it, smear it over the red. I'm not I'm not gouging into that red right now. I'm not gouging into it. I'm just going over it. I need more blue. I like this stuff that happened. I'm gonna, like I said, it's on there thick. Let me show you. This is thick. I'm gonna take that and that's gonna. Oh I'm just putting it on top of that red. I'm really, I'm trying my darndest not to blend it. I just want it over it. I'm going to start over on this side and try to get some more on there. I need a little bit more blue. Personally, I like these things that happened. And like I said, again, that this just kind of happened, this stuff happened accidentally. But when you're doing landscapes, especially a Minnesota landscape, you can get away with so many little accidents. Because the trees and the trees along the skylines are pretty, uh, they change. No, no. No, no, no two are alike. Every branch is on every tree is different. So I'm going to fill in these spaces. Like I said, my paint's nice and thick. I'm really not pushing down into that red. I'm just kind of trying to cover over it. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason I want to have this paint thick. And there's a reason I'm 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 not pressing into and just trying to do a mix like we did up here. Those are mixes. Some of those are mixes. But I just want some paint. I want kind of thick paint right here. Because we're we're gonna we're gonna switch it up and do something kind of a kind of fun. All right, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you folks catch up. We'll take a two minute breather while you're catching up and getting to this point. And then we're gonna um we're gonna move some of this paint here, this blue into that red, just yeah. by using our palette knives. Yeah. Just by using our palette knives. Get out. She's out. My grandson. Attention oh, seeker. What we're going to do is I'm going to clean up my palette knife. I'm going to use it as a kind of like a pencil. And I'm just using one palette knife because I figure you all have one. Sometimes I'll use different ones. For example, 
I might use a little bit bigger one, like this one, but I'm not. I'm just going to use this one. Oh, this one. And I'm going to just take some of this paint. I'm just going to see what happens. See if I can drag some up. Not too hard. Don't scrape down too hard, but just try to drag some up. We're making little trees in the background. Just try to, and don't be all, uh, don't be too, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you can let some, of, they don't have to be completely straight up and down, but, but don't make it look like a tornado went through and get them too diagonal. What a ver nice variety. So, all right. I'm going to use the side of this palette knife, which is nice and thin. I'm going to use it to, I'm going to put it into the paint and just kind of drag it up. And you know what? This movement I'm doing right now, because I'm holding the knife like this. I mean, who will hold the palette knife like this? You just take it and just drag it. It'll be nice and gentle. Because the only thing I'm using is this finger. That's the only pressure I'm putting on this. And sometimes you'll have thick areas of paint and it'll do something. And thin areas of paint. I'm just lifting some of this up. But I got this cool right here. It's cool. I think it's cool the way that that red's peeking through. I'm going to leave it alone. Go around it. I'm not, I'm trying not to scrape, just trying to drag, drag it up, drag it up. When I have enough, when I think I have enough, when it feels right, um, then we're going to do a few horizontal lines. I got to clean this thing up. I don't want to waste my paint though. If you folks like are starting to be a mess and by that, I mean getting paint all over yourself. Well, that tells me you're painting. Focusing more on what we're doing here on the canvas then your surroundings, which to me is a good place to be. All right. This is what I got so far. I kind of like this rugged, kind of grassy looking trees. So I think I'm going to take some of this paint from down here. And just All right. Here's what I want you to do. I don't know how much paint you put down here, but you can either take this some of this paint or just get some new paint and just just on the tip. Actually, that's too much. Just a tiny bit on the tip. Okay. I'm not gonna work right here. I'm just gonna do a dab. Dab, 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 dab. dab. Pick up a little bit more. Now remember, just a little bit of paint. I cleaned it off. Just a little bit of paint on the tip of your palette knife. Like that. And even that's too much. It's too thick. I'll wipe some off. That's good. And just kind of dab, dab. I don't really have a lot of control this palette knife. I mean, I'm holding this thing at a really bizarre angle, but that's all right. It's giving me some, oh no. Hmm, that's a problem up there. I'm just gonna leave it alone and think about it. So I want some dabs up here. But be careful when you get to the top because it should be getting the dab should be a little smaller, but let's put some on here. Let's get these trees growing. I'm just dabbing. 
Pick it up. Dab, 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 dab. Oops. I guess it's telling me what way this is going to go. Oh, man, that's way too much. Okay. Now, many of you may have a big, giant mess, which is all right. We need something to work with. All right, here's what I'm doing, okay? I got paint on here. I'm just gonna take the tip of this thing and I'm, I'm not gonna put any new paint on. I'm just gonna go, just gonna tap it. Let the colors mix. Tap it up, some of this up into my yellow. I'm not going in much farther. Yeah, I am. But be careful, don't be wasting your awesome red and your awesome yellow. All right, now, hopefully you all have a really nice mess right now. But we're gonna straighten it out with a clean palette knife. All right, it's clean, very clean. So I'm just gonna, I'll start down here. I'm, and these are gonna be pine trees, so they're gonna go across. I'm just gonna put some horizontal lines and some of these, probably all of them. Trying to get me some trees. I'm not adding any more paint. Letting it mix. Okay, hmm. Pick up some blue. Go find my major trees. There's one here. I'm gonna go read, go define some of these. There's one here. Take some of this blue that there's a lot of blue down here. Should be kind of thick. Bring some of that up. I'm make it a little heavier blue, dark on the bottom. I'm just gonna call it a dark. Even though it's blue, it's a very dark blue. Let's call it a dark. I'm trying to make it heavy down here. I'm actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add more blue, dark blue down here.
Okay. So wiping off my palette knife. Now we have this bottom look to do. Take a look at your trees. Make them a little more defined if you want to. A little more tree looking if you want to, but the human eye is quite capable of putting things together. Meaning your viewer can put some of this together too. I'm just going to work a little bit more on some of these trees. And I like that as they go up, they get lighter. Let's go up and a little bit on the sides, up and a little bit on each side, up a little bit on each side. And this paint that's already on the canvas should be mixing. Man, I got some of this yellow down here, but I don't care. I kind of like that. Actually, let's do this. Let's pick up, let's clean this palette nice off. And we'll go and we'll pick up a little bit of that yellow, yellowish white. So I got my, here's my palette. And we take some of this white, I just cannot see. Mix it in with some yellow because I like this lemony color. Okay. Here's what I want us to do with this, all right? Now, I kind of want it to be flat. Oh, so if, if you have a palette, some nice space, I want you to make it, the paint on your palette knife kind of flat. I've showed you before when I have a lot of paint on my palette knife. Now what I'd like you to do is just on the top, on the bottom. Right now what I'm doing, I'm just kind of, let me see, kind of like rubbing this, smearing this, so I have just a small amount of paint on my palette knife, okay? Now, you were, you've been busy making all these awesome textures down here. If our paint's nice and thin, and you can just kind of really lightly Try to skim. Well, let's start up here. In case you mess up. And just kind of very barely touch. Very barely touch. Try not to touch. Try to just skim your surface. Hit the high points of your textures. All right, and then if you got a mess on your palette knife like this, clean it off and do it again. 
Now remember what we're trying to do. I'm going to tell you again. What we're doing is we did a nice big sketchy mess down here. And some of your paint on your canvas should have some peaks. And we're going to skim the top of those peaks. Uh, I wish you could see this better. I'm going to make sure you do. So I'm just going to. There's not going to be much paint on this palette knife at all. I want it nice and thin. Very thin coat of paint on the palette knife. Not a lot. All right. And I'm going to try again. Just to really barely touch this painting. Just kind of hover. Hover over it and move it and see if you can just hit a few of those high points. Oh, I got it there. I'm going to come over here, try to get some more. I know there's some down here. I like this right here. So let's let's say you did this. You did, you got your um some of this yellow, this light, nice light yellow. You can move it a little bit around if you want to in a horizontal motion to give us an indication that yeah, these really are trees. Make some of those go up. Up, 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 up. All right. So now we're going to have some fun in this dark area. I kind of like this yellow right here. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to clean this palette knife off. And pick up some of this yellow. Don't matter how much you get on here. And I'm going to put some down or kind of like where the blue and the red meet down here by where the solid blue is and we'll just say that where the solid blue is i'm gonna put some yellow on i'm gonna just put a few lines of yellow i'm gonna hold my knife this way and i'm gonna tilt it actually i'm not gonna apply it like flat i'm gonna tilt it and i'm just gonna Set it down and drag, lift it up. Set it down and drag, lift it up. Same thing. I don't want to say it again, but I will. Set it down and drag. There. <laughs> so now, now that we got that nice yellow to work with, I'm gonna go to the brightest one so you can see. We're just there's nothing on my brush, just some paint. But I just want to take this yellow and kind of move some of it up, 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 up. kind of make some grassy looking stuff here. Hopefully you'll have some spots that are nice and bright yellow and some that are not so bright. All right, I think I want some more. I want some more of this yellow. I don't want, if, if we can't have too much or, or we're really gonna, if we overdo this, if we overdo this with this yellow, we're gonna, we're gonna lose that color. We're not even gonna see it. So we're gonna be careful with this yellow. Actually, here's what we'll do. Um, I, I want some yellow only on the tip of this palette knife. We're gonna, let's see, what time is it? How much, oh, eight o'clock? Okay, we'll have enough time to do this bottom part. All right, I just want some on the two. That's all I got. Yep. I'm just gonna put some dots of awesome yellow. I'm just gonna press it down, drag it a little, press and drag. I do a lot of pressing and dragging. I like to do that because it mixes the color underneath. 
If you need to pick up a little more paint because you barely had any. That's cool. Just gonna press. Just gonna press it down and pull it. Press and pull. Press and pull. And I like these little random dots. So the random dots. I'm just gonna. Sorry. I'm just gonna go into it and drag it up. Drag it up. Drag it up. Hmm. Let's mix up. I'm thinking. Let's mix up. Let's get some green. We haven't even done green yet. Let's get some green. Uh, I know you got green from your tube, right? Whatever kind of green you have from your tube, I want you to just add a speck of blue to it, darken it up a little. And we're just going to take that dark green and go underneath this blue. Put it on. Sorry. That's going to put some nice green on here. But I want, I want some of that blue to show. I'm just going to put my green on. And, I, and I, I don't care very much about this dark green. It's just going to be an undertone. So I'm just, all I do, all I want really is I just want it on here. And then I need to get more green. All right, like I said, I'm putting this green and you can barely even tell the dark blue from the green, but that's okay. I, oh, I just want it on there. That's all. Dark green going across. Okay. Mm, let's just leave that alone for a while. We'll come back to that dark green. So, so just have it there. And we're gonna need some blue now. Let's mix up. Let's mix up a blue and a white. Let's mix up a kind of like the sky color, kind of the same thing we did with the sky. Let's do that. Let's mix up that same color, and and then we're gonna lighten it. And the way we did that, as a reminder, is we. Put a speck of green in there and some white. Now let's let's put kind of a lot of paint on right now because we're going to cover this whole area. So let's just put. Make sure you make enough of this color. My point. And I'm just going to do it in a heartbeat here. Wow. So I'm gonna just I got my blue right here. I'm gonna add this speck of yellow to it first. Make sure you make enough of this now. So we can cover that whole area. Oh, I want it lighter than that, so I'm going to go ahead and grab me some of this white. I get a blue that I actually like. Kind of like this color, even though it's kind of dark, that's all right. I'll lighten it up later. It's the medium blue that I want, so I'm going to scrape this up and let's gob it on folks let's just gob it on the rest of this be ready to wrap this thing up I will take this a little bit. oops huh. I'm just gonna I just want it covered that's all I want this covered
Are we chatting? Well, kind of running out of blue, but I'm going to have to lighten this up myself. Okay. I have most of mine covered up. I tried to do it fast. And I got some white right here. It's all solid white. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to touch the green with this white. It's going to, because I know that it's going to mix and be very green. But I guess that's all right. That'll be fine. Hmm. All right. Um, I have this dark green here. And what I want to do is put some uh, like cattails and some uh, moose ear in this area. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna take this dark green that I got, a line of it here, and drag it down into this lighter green. I hope you folks saw how I did that. These are mostly uh, vertical lines. I think you can see, there they are, right there. So I'm dragging, I'm not going up, I'm going down. Dragging these down into it because I, I just want a real swampy, impenetrable Minnesota landscape. The kind where you can only really look at and you would be pretty, very difficult if you went into this, physically went into this area, probably be sinking in the mud. I'm going to work on this, where the, this dark blue is up here, I'm going to do more scraping into, I'm trying to make a, oh, I'm trying to make a um, perspective, get a little perspective. We'll come back to this area later. Let's just work on this. We're gonna try our darndest right now to not have any of this green enter into our next colors. So I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna clean up this palette knife. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to show you what happened to mine, and I kind of like it. I kind of like that I ran out of dark blue paint, and I got some light color here. I like that, and there's not much else I can do about it at the moment, because I'm saving my darks for later. I'm just going to take this palette knife. Nothing on it. I'm just going to press into this white and then I'm going to drag it that way. Because this is too square. It's too squarish. So I'm trying, I'm going to try to just bring it out. I kind of like that. It looks like uh, sparklies on the water. I want you to, uh, I want you folks to take a really good look at your painting. 
and try and make sure that there's no like exposed white canvas. I know I got a few areas. If you see that, let's fix it up now because we're going to start wrapping, finishing this up. So like I said, if you see it, just right now, well, all I'm doing right now is I'm, I don't even have paint on here. I just, I did put it on kind of thick. So I'm just moving it around. Sometimes if you just press down and drag it around, it'll, it'll get some nice ran, uh, random lines. Okay, now right here in this corner, what I did was I just took this white and dragged it into this blue. Now I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm going to take some of this blue, drag it into this white, because there's too much of it. So I'm just going to do the opposite of what I just did. Going the other way and hope the heck it works. But I like the drag lines. And like I said, like I keep on saying, Whiskey. your paint's going to do some strange things. Your palette knife's going to be responsible for it because when it, especially when it comes to nature scenes, the amount of pressure that you put on your palette knife, sometimes it's heavy, and sometimes it's light. So you're going to get a variety of shapes and marks from that and personally I think that is some cool stuff because because it's nice and random so I want you to take a look at your paintings and uh, check to make sure that the canvas is completely covered. Just check for white spots. And let's get those covered. And we're going to wrap this up. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's paintings me too <laughs> i'm a little bit worried but not really yeah, i know they're gonna be cool they're gonna be great what, what's really gonna be awesome is they're all gonna be different i lost myself oh, jean there's jean <gasps> wow look at that jean looking cool very nice oh, yeah We're going to try really hard to pull this off. Just taking a couple minute break here. That is beautiful. Make, put it closer, Jean. I want to see. I'm going to turn you on there. Let's see. All right. Hey, that's nice and wild. Love you, trees. Awesomeness. Mm -hmm. Hey, he's looking great. You folks know how to paint. <laughs> All right. Oh, I missed Amis and Rizals. Oh, Voltan. Mm -hmm. If folks click on view at the top right of your screen, you can change to gallery view and that will show you everybody in a more equal. Oh. Nice. Looking good, looking good. Hey. Oh, wow. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, view. Um, I gotta find myself. Let's see. Okay. Looks like Jeff is chefing up over there. <laughs> well, let's do this. I know what we'll do now. Let's get a nice, a really, really light green, very light green. So mix it with your yellow and your white. Get a nice light green. Okay, we're just gonna use the very tips of your palette knife. And we're just gonna put a few dabs, not too many, just a couple. These are lily pads, by the way. Put them in there with the cattails, right towards the bottom. Of course, I overdid it. All right, now that you got your lily pads in there. I'm just going to spec. I'm going to make a bunch of specks. Because what I'm going to do with that, these specks come underneath them with a dark green. All right, I got a bunch of yellow specks. So if I take some dark green, I can um, define them a little bit. I don't want to define them too much, though, because they're small and kind of far away. So we don't want to make them too clear. So I'm just putting, as you can see, I'm just putting some dark lines underneath them. You want to make new ones, you can with the color you mix. We're not going to define these too much because they're kind of far away. <laughs> well, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's have some coming towards us. And I did tell my people here to put their dogs outside. So I just want to make a few coming in from this corner over here. Just a little bit larger. Oh man, that's way too large. And your palette knife should be able to do that for you. You shouldn't have to work too hard at it. Mine are really big. I didn't really want that. There's nothing I can do about it now. So it makes some other ones bigger. Just going to have them come towards me. From one corner. I may as well have some come from this corner, but not as many and not as large. Well, that one's pretty large. All right. And now that I got these awesome blobs here and there, I will take that darker green, go underneath them on the bottom part. I'm going to do that by just adding a little bit. See how there's just a line? A line of green on my, the bottom of my palette knife? 
the whole it's not full of paint i only have it on the edge so so i want you folks to see this just gonna put a little bit on the bottom of some of these kind of draw you can i'm just trying to draw with my palette knife draw some lines underneath some of these so i can define them a little bit all right i got a problem over here i didn't listen to myself and cover up all my canvas so i'm going to take some i have a i have a problem right here i'm gonna fix it try to fix it well that's kind of a mess oops i'll just put little dabs of green But like I said, these ones way towards the background here, we shouldn't be able to define them too much. They're kind of, they should be kind of messing in. Indiscernible. But as they come closer to us, we can make them a little more obvious as to what they are. And we can do that with our palette knife. So I just want a couple that are really kind of nice. and. I'm going to have one corner, this corner be a little lighter, and I'm going to have this corner a little heavier. I don't want to make these exactly the same because that's too symmetrical. I don't want it too symmetrical. But you'll notice that my palette knife is shaped like an oval, which is really good for doing the lily pads. I'm just going to put one right there. I'll try it again. So all I really got to do is press and drag, and the shape should form from the shape of my palette knife. All right, let's do something drastic. With the clean palette knife, let's just pick up some white, okay? Try to get a nice, pure, clean white, as white as you can. It's pretty difficult on my palette to find a nice white. But I got some. And maybe like towards the top of these, just dab a little bit of white on there. That's going to be our highlight. Or maybe, well, we don't want to make the flowers. That's, that's a whole other painting. But just to add a little bit of light to them, some of these. Okay, I think I like it. Let's do this. Mm, we're almost done, folks. Let's. I kind of want to do something on the top of these, right in this area. Remember, I said, oh, we'll come back to that. I kind of want to do something here, but not too much. I kind of like that it's dark. But let's just take some of that um, light green that we made. And we'll just put a little, let's just do dabs. Oh, let me think. Now let's do, let me see. Let's just put a few lines of the light up in there. Not a lot. And make sure these are like a rectangular shape. See how mine are rectangular shape? Not a lot of those. We're, it'll be too busy. Just a few. So what do I do a lot? 
put some a little higher than others. That I messed up, as you'll notice, I mess up once in a while. All right. Okay, folks. If you like your water, I, let's do this. One, one more thing, then, then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Let's just make an area. Since this is so dark in here, I like that it's dark. Um, I like that this is nice and light, but I want a little bit of dark blue in there. Just a small amount. So let's do it. Let me try this. Okay, I have an idea. Let's try to make, oops, let's try to make some of this dark blue. Let's have it, you should have like, if you look at your painting, you should notice that you have some of the lily pads coming this way, right? And the other ones are like coming this way. And so then you have this area right in here. Where it's a little kind of vast. There's not much in here. I hope that's what you have. But I do want a little bit of dark blue in here. I don't want to put it back there. That would be like too obvious. But I can put it like right in here. I can put some down in here, a little bit of dark blue down in here. A little bit of dark blue maybe over here just to give this a little variety I'm gonna do it now but I'm just gonna press and drag press nice and light drag it just to get some dark blue in there maybe right here just press it and drag. I like that. I like that mark, even though it's maybe over here a little bit. Not too much, but some. Just so it looks like, like our water's kind of deep as it comes toward us. Plus, we need our water to be like um, kind of rough because we're not putting reflections, the sky reflections, we're not putting those in. So we're trying to make our, our water look rough because if it's rough looking, it's not gonna, there's not gonna be much for reflections. And I kind of like how my, this dark blue is just kind of, it's not real, what's the word for, uh, Hmm, it's not real smooth. It's, it is kind of random. Especially, I'll show you right. Right in here. I'm not thinking too hard about making it perfect. I just want the color there. That's all. If you want to take your palette knife and just rip it across. Get some straight lines going. That's cool too. Just whatever you think's gonna. We don't want to overdo it at the same time. So I'm gonna stop with this soon. Like now. Let me look. All right. So I'd like y'all to look at your paintings. If you see something that's like, OMG, this I got to fix, be really careful trying to fix it. And try to stay away. I want you to stay away from this area right here. Just stay away from it because nothing you do is going to make it better. So stay away from this area here. If you want to work on an area, you can work down in here. You're thinking, oh, I want this really dark over here. This blue's not right. I'm just trying to make my water look rough. But like I said, don't go back there. It's danger back there. 
actually whatever you do back there is not gonna look good just trust me i've messed it up plenty in the past all right hmm. so now comes the very most important part of all and that would be i'm putting some dark blue down down here i'm putting dark blue down close to me close to the closest to the viewer i'm gonna put some dark blue here oh the most important part our signature so let's do it i like to do it while the paint's still wet just take your palette knife the tip of it i'm not sure how you sign your name but i sign mine just ks blue i'm just going to etch it in there we go i'm going to clean up love it i am a mess so while while uh karen is cleaning up and you're probably finishing up uh don't forget your signature and uh we we do want to see your pieces if you're brave enough to show us um we i will be sending out a, a survey a participant survey uh in an email to all the ones that registered and i will also send out the the recorded link of this session uh, so if you wanted to uh, share that with somebody who missed this class or share it with a friend or family member, you can, and they can give it a try. I'm going to try to give it a try this weekend because I wasn't able to try right now. Um, so I'm kind of jealous of you all. Um, but so I will be emailing you probably later tonight or in the morning. And um, hopefully you'll be able to just take a few minutes to, to um, you're welcome, Carly. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, hopefully you can fill out that survey to give us some feedback. Um, but I'm just going to say miigwech for joining us um, tonight. You don't have to leave right now, but um, thanks for joining us and um, look for, check out our ACO uh, Gallery's Facebook page um, and also go to um, Indigenous First gift shop. Um, you can go online to uh, www.indigenousfirst.org and you can find Karen, Karen's paintings that are for sale um, with that gift shop. And so that's indigenousfirst.org. So you can, can see some of her paintings um, and prints. But I'm going to turn it back over to Karen. Karen, I don't know if you want... I'll let you be the one to instruct folks to share their paintings and such. All right. Uh, let me get myself back on here. Oh, okay. Let me turn this off. All right, folks. Do we have questions? Got some questions. Any questions for Karen about the process tonight or about her artwork or painting or? Or the little guy behind me. Yes. <laughs> we'll pull your, your road out each, each day in the winter for $20. Like shovel all, uh, all the snow. Yeah, I'm probably gonna give up. Doesn't yeah, look like there's any up. questions. Um, can we share? Can can we ever everyone share their paintings? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Put them in view gallery. I want to see. Oh, nice, Jean. Hey, Glenn. Way to go. Yeah. Galvin. Gavin. Glenn looks yeah. nice. Wow. 
Oh, you guys got some wow. art for your walls. Cool, cool. Look at that. Hey, Aurora. And Tammy, nice, nice. Where's the rest of you folks? Who is this right here? Come on now. Aurora, that's really oh, nice. Wow. Look at Michelle. Oh, cool. What about Zoe and Botan and Janet and Becky and Shannon? And Alina. And Kim. Yeah, Alina, where's yours? Nice. You got some green in there, Michelle. Cool. That is nice. I mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. All right. Jean, let's see yours again. It's kind of at an angle. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. What about Zoe? Zoe, where's yours? Nice. Be, be brave. Amy, how about yours? No. Maybe maybe um people can like take a photo of theirs and send them. Yes. That'd be cool. That would be really cool. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to do that. You could just email me your photo right. and then I can share that with Karen. Um, I'll put my email in here again, but you'll have it in the email that I send the survey and the link to this class. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what, what works really good for getting the paint up is Dawn dishwashing detergent. You know, they use the they use it on birds to get the oil off them. It's pretty much the same thing. It works the same way. So yeah, that Dawn dishwashing detergent. Nice. Thanks for sharing. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Amy. Okay. So if you can email me your your picture um, at ivv at aco.org uh, or you could post it on Facebook and then uh, tag ACO galleries in it in the post. Um, I did some hashtags too. Um, hashtag Karen Savage Blue, hashtag Minnesota Landscape, hashtag Art Heals, and hashtag ACO galleries. So if you use those hashtags, that would be really, really cool. Um, there you go. Becky just put them in the, in the chat there. Um, I want to say thank you to a big. Oh, oh way to nice. go. Mm -hmm. Nice. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah. I love oil paint. Yeah. So. Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say, but um, I just want to say chimigwich to, to, to Karen uh, for this class and um, uh, will that painting be for sale? Yeah, that's, folks, you should all sell your paintings. That's the big question. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, I want to say chimigwich to Becky, our Zoom assistant, and she's been on these all for over a year uh, with me, um, helping out, assisting me with all these Zoom cultural sessions, and so thankful for thankful to her um, for her help. And um, that's all I have. So, um, anything else, uh, Karen? I just want to say I hope you all enjoyed this painting session. I hope you all continue to paint it's 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 one of the best things you can do for yourself and and also others you get to enjoy you and what you've done and what you've made it's a part your painting is a part of who you are mm. it's a good way to share yeah all right okay miigwech everybody yeah all righty have a good night mm -hmm. keep painting Right, right. Okay, Giga Wobberman.